We welcome you in to Minford High School as the Falcons are set to host the Jeeps of South Webster in a big time Tuesday night SOC3 matchup. Dewey Daly along with John Bruce, glad to have you with us. John, one of the most anticipated boys basketball games in our coverage area this season. Yeah, it should be a big game. Pretty disappointed that the Jeep is not here. That is the only thing right now that is disappointing me as we have a big time matchup here. Some big time players, a lot of young kids on the court as well. Really South Webster, only a couple of seniors. Same for Minford. For the most part, the cores of these teams will be back again next year. So this should be the first of four really good matchups between these two groups over the next couple of seasons. Both teams come into tonight with one loss for Minford, 8-1, and 1-0 one, one and in the SOC3 with that first league win last Friday over Lucasville Valley, their only loss in the battle in the 7-4-0 showcase down at Shawnee State a handful of weeks back, falling to New Albany. Since then, a seven-game win streak for the Falcons, 5-0 and oh, this season at home. Yeah, it's a really good start for the Falcons, you know, replacing two really good seniors from a year ago in Johanna and Adam Crank. And really, in those roles, Troy Rhodes and Jeff Pika have done a really good job for them, as long uh, as well as Kate Glockner, the junior that comes off the bench for the Falcons. Three-game winning streak for the Falcons against South Webster, the last win for the Jeeps. You have to go back to December 17th of 2021. It was their first matchup of that season, 56-42 South Webster, that game right here at Minford. So South Webster going to look to recreate history here in 2024. For the Jeeps come into tonight 9-1, falling in their first SOC 3 league game of the season, falling to Wheelersburg 71-61. That game also last Friday to the 7-2 Wheelersburg Pirates. Yeah, that, that Wheelersburg team has, you know, had a really good start to the season. So, you know, I would say, you know, a pretty big surprise, but, you know, my broadcast colleague here called it on overtime presented by McDonald's yeah. that that game would happen. And pretty two impressive. for two on my last yes. two. Big game. And I tell you what, this game, what a busy week for us yes. it will be this week. We're only halfway through, but what a way to start off last night. Yeah, just an outstanding game. If you get a chance, go back and watch the Portsmouth Trojans knocking off Fairland Dragons and girls basketball. First league loss in 42 contests for Fairland. Uh, first time that we could even find. Well, I was going to say, Portsmouth had first beaten. win for Portsmouth over Fairland since joining the OVC in 2014. Yes. It was 18 consecutive losses for the Trojans in that time span. Yeah, so a big time win there. Now going to tonight's game, you know, this is a big time game for the Jeeps because they don't want to start off 0-2 in SOC 3 play, especially with there not being that many league games with you know you only have the 10 league games this year with less teams in the league so this is a big time game for them obviously they don't have coach Pearson on the bench tonight as Ryan Fenton will be running things for the Jeeps so uh, hopefully coach Pearson gets gets well soon and gets back on the sidelines as soon as possible but for the Jeeps you just have to look at Eli Roberts, a 6'7 junior averaging 26.2 points a game 9.1 rebounds a game Shoot 83% from the line, 33% from three. Kind of a unorthodox way of shooting, but he's gotten it a little bit down this year. Before he had gotten just almost too much arc on it. Now he's flattened it out a little bit. He's been much more consistent and just had an outstanding start to his junior year. And kind of what we had heard about him over the last couple of years is coming true this year as a junior, and he's been outstanding for the Jeeps. And for Minford, you have Miles Montgomery, yes. the reigning SOC2 player of the year in the conference, scored his 1,000th point a little bit earlier on in the season against South Gallia. He comes back as an all-SOC2 first-teamer, as does Bennett Kayser. You bring back Jackson Shoemaker as an all-SOC2 second-teamer as well. Yeah, and I think you're going to see Bennett Kayser and Eli Roberts likely matching up with each other both uh, Roberts listed at 6'7", Kayser listed at 6'6", both great athletes that play above the rim and can really get out and go. It should be a really good matchup. I'm interested to see what South Webster does at the guard position to slow down Miles Montgomery because 
to me, last year and watching the two games, that was the difference was what Miles Montgomery could do at the guard position. But at the same time, he had Adam Crank, who was a knockdown shooter from outside last year. Can Troy Rhodes fill that spot tonight? You know, did just that yes. when we saw him at North Adams. Right, yeah. So, I mean, Rhodes has had a nice start to a season, and so has Jeffrey Pika. So, should be a really fun matchup here between two really good programs. That, I mean, Menford Division Three, Southwestern Division Four, both teams have really high aspirations for deep tournament runs this year and next. It wouldn't surprise me to see both these teams playing deep into March down at the Convo and, and maybe beyond that. And Webster 14 and nine last year, 15 and nine the year before that. Back-to-back -back winning seasons for the Jeeps falling in the first round of the D4 tournament last year. Obviously, they'll look to get a little bit deeper this year. Yep. We'll pause now for the national anthem. everyone, Mike Glockner. I'm Brandon Callahan. Of the all new Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Service Center in Portsmouth, Ohio. We have a $39.95 oil change special going on right now. That includes a free tire rotation and free multi-point inspection. Schedule your appointment online at glocknercdjrofportsmouth.com. Mark. Six months of training. Eight miles to go. A three-way tie for almost last place. And three years since he and his team at Ohio Health left cancer in the dust.
Starters introduced, Minford rocking the home whites, Jeeps rocking the road reds. Starters tonight for Minford, Troy Rhodes, Miles Montgomery, Jeff Pika, Jackson Shoemaker, and Bennett Kayser for the Jeeps. Eli Roberts, Christian White, Owen Moult, Jack Timothy, and Tyler Summer. Tell you what, the the fire chiefs better not be called in here tonight because they cannot fit any more people into this gym. Really impressive crowd from both sides as we're on the mezzanine level and we're two to three people deep up here as well. Jeeps and Falcons, here we go. Tuesday night, SOC three league matchup. First possession tonight belongs to Minford. Give and go with Montgomery and Kayser. Top of the key three, Shoemaker puts it in. That is way too easy to start for Minford. Perfect start for the Falcons. Jeeps get it across half with Summer near side taken away by Minford as Christian White regains possession. Now on the break, number 13, Jack Timothy can't get it to go. Rebound goes to Jackson Shoemaker. Yeah, and Timothy had Roberts open in the corner, but attacked the basket instead. He's shooting over 70% from the field, so not a bad shot at all for the Jeeps to start off. Falcons now back on the attack, tipped into the backcourt by Roberts. Montgomery regains control. Near side, Rhodes, feed underneath, Kayser, up with the right hand, can't get it to go off the front iron. Roberts brings down the defensive rebound. Getting nine boards a game this season. He's going to need to get even more than that tonight to keep this active Falcon team off the glass. Christian White from the top of the key going to work on Pika. Feeds over to Timothy underneath, one-on-one -on -one with Shoemaker. Scoop layup with the left hand. First points tonight for South Webster. Pretty footwork there from Jack Timothy. Gets the first two points of the game. 3-2 lead, Minford. Shoemaker hands it off. Kayser Montgomery moving three, puts it in. That's two set plays that they've ran to try to get a three at the top of the key. Both of them have looked really good so far. Quick 6-2 lead for the Falcons. Summer now in the half court. Pulls up from 10. Can't get it to go. Offensive rebound for Owen Malt. Big board there for Malt. Down low, Timothy. One-on-one. -on -one. Right hand rolls around and in for two. 6-4, Minford. I don't know if we would have guessed that Timothy would have had three shots already, but all three of them have been good looks, getting two of them to go. Only returning SOC2 first-teamer for the Jeeps. Near side, Montgomery for three, in and out. Offensive rebound, Kayser keeps it alive. Poked away by Summer. Foul on the floor. And that was another really good look for Minford. I've liked their actions that they've ran so far. Now we're going to see Bennett Kayser at the line. Maybe the only place where he was a little bit shaky in that game when we watched them over at Minford. Shooting foul called on Christian White sends Kayser to the line. Two shots, now a three-point lead for the Falcons. Not shaky at all on that first one. Gets his first point of the game. Kayser knocks down the pair, 8-4 Falcons. Three quarters court pressure from the Falcons underneath. Roberts taken away by yeah. Shoemaker, who's called for the foul around the free throw line. That's a good call. Just a lot of contact. Kind of surprised they didn't call it a shooting foul, but there was a good bit of contact. That's why Roberts lost it on his way up. Baseline out of bounds play. Coming up, Christian White inbounding into Owen Molt beyond the volleyball line. Near side, Summer feed to Timothy, back to Summer, right wing three on the way. Too strong off the back iron. Jeff Pika brings down the defensive rebound. But a good look there for Tyler Summer. Good board by Jeffrey Pika. 8-4 Falcons, Montgomery driving, draws contact and the foul. Yeah. First foul tonight on Owen Malt. Big thank you to Kristen Ruby and the rest of the athletic department here at Minford for 
allowing us to come and, in my opinion, have the best seat yes. in the house. John, it doesn't get much better than this. Yeah, we have a perfect view tonight. And, you know, with as many people as there are here, you know, and it's, it's nice and we got a little room as well. We might be the only people in here that have a room. Montgomery knocks down the first, as does the second. 10-4, Falcons. Five quick points for the first team All-Ohioan from a year ago. Roberts fading away. Tough shot. Foul called on Kayser. A matchup we've been looking forward to in recent weeks as of now. Eli Roberts to the line for two. Something to watch for. That's already two fouls that Eli Roberts has drawn so far in this game. One on Shoemaker and one on Kayser. So... Hey, 83% at the line so far this year for Eli Roberts. 26.2 points per game, 9.1 rebounds to go along with it. Knocks down the pair, lead for Menford, cut down to four. Yeah, as I said, a little unorthodox, but I mean, right now it's, it's money at this point. Entry pass to Kayser, tipped away by Roberts. Malt with the loose ball on the floor for the steal. In transition, Summer going all the way, stripped by Jeff Pika. Ball is loose on the floor. Christian White corrals. Now Molt driving in, short range jumper won't go. Jeff Pika fights for the rebound. Foul on the floor on the 6'4 senior, Jack Timothy. Yeah, we're gonna see a lot of loose ball, a lot of effort from both teams. And I'm guessing with the amount of people in here, we're going to see a lot of times where we're going to have to stop play to get the floor dried up, ball dried up. Nice job by Pika using his body to get his second rebound already. Five fouls halfway through. The first is Shoemaker pulls a contested three. Can't get it there. Kayser fights for the offensive rebound. Gets it back into Montgomery. Off the screen, Montgomery feeds the Shoemaker off of his shoe. Can't get it up. Owen oh, Malt comes up with the steal. All right, his second steal for Malt. In transition, White stopped by Rhodes, feeds it out to Malt. Penetrates now right back to White. Summer now driving in on Kayser, back to White now. Near side with Jack Timothy, back to White. In the corner, three ball on the way, won't go for Eli Roberts. Offensive rebound for Summer. White now, top of the key three, back iron, no good. Another offensive rebound for Summer, taken away by Kayser. On the break, Kayser up with the right hand, won't go. Offensive rebound, Rhodes, his put back is off. Rebound, Christian White. In transition, Roberts knocks down the 12-footer. Yeah, things getting moving a little quick here, which is benefiting the Jeep so far. Five minutes in, five fouls, five separate players. Kayser pulls up, right elbow jumper won't go. Another offensive rebound for Troy Rhodes. Montgomery way downtown, can't hit. Just a little too deep there. Timothy pulls down his first board. That's a travel. Roberts traveling around half court, moving the left pivot foot. That hands it right back to Minford. Dylan Schubert checking in for the first time tonight, Eight. as does Cade Blockner. Brock Campbell in for the Jeeps as well. Campbell, who had been starting, has been playing very well for the Jeeps so far this season. Montgomery driving left side, pulls up for the mid-range jumper, won't go. Rebound goes to Tyler Summer. Falcons by two with two minutes to go in the first. Campbell driving, right hand, blocked by Kayser, rebound Montgomery. On the break, Montgomery, spin move, up for the shot, can't drop it in. Is it going to be on the shot or on the floor? I think it's going to be on the shot. Foul is on Christian White. With two shots for Montgomery. His second trip to the line tonight. The big thing in transition is stopping Miles Montgomery. Unable to do so there. Makes a nice spin move and is going to get himself to the line. Six now for Montgomery.
Hunter Bernard checking in for the Jeeps. His first entry tonight as Montgomery knocks down the pair. Could be a big second foul on Christian White. Averages 5.7 assists a game. Fading away for Roberts. Can't knock it down. Rebound Jackson Shoemaker. Pushed ahead, Pika in transition with the right hand and the foul. And that's what Pika can do. He's not going to look to shoot a lot, but he's going to get you in transition. And he's big, strong, and he can finish at the hoop. Great look ahead by Jackson Shoemaker on that play. First points tonight for the 5'10 senior. Chance to push this Falcon lead up to seven. Unable to knock down the free throw. Eli Roberts the rebound. Campbell pushing up the far side. Now Schubert on the right wing. Bernard now back to Campbell. Campbell looking down low for Summer. Double teamed out to Schubert who pulls a three. Puts it in. Yeah, you've got to have somebody other than Summer and Roberts scoring. And Dylan Schubert can do that. Averaging seven points a game. Big shot there for the junior. 14 to 11, Menford. Montgomery draws the foul on Brock Campbell, his third trip to the line in the first quarter. Montgomery four for four at the line already tonight. First shot for Montgomery on the way. Can't drop it in. Remains a three-point lead for the Falcons. Second shot on the way and in. 15 to 11, Minford. Campbell driving on Shoemaker. Stripped Summer there for the loose ball. Looking back door, now near side. Roberts, one on one with Kayser. His shot is too short. Rebound, Cade Glockner. And kind of gutsy there for Bennett Kayser. Could have been his second foul. Shoemaker, top of the key, three, catches the front iron, won't go. Offensive rebound for Miles Montgomery. Underneath, Kayser. Foul on the Jeeps, Dylan Schubert. His first. Check that, his second. A lot of fouls already on the Jeeps in this game, and most of them have been of the shooting variety. Three points, two fouls for Schubert. First shot for Kayser rolls in and out. Troy Rhodes back in for the Falcons and for Jackson Shoemaker as Owen Malt re-enters for the Jeeps, comes in for the junior Dylan Schubert. Kayser 0 for 2 from the stripe, remains a four-point lead for the Falcons. Big chance here for the Jeeps. Bernard driving, kicks it out to Malt. Now Roberts, top of the key, guarded by Pika. Roberts driving, loses the hand on it. Montgomery fighting for it, but tempts it out of bounds. It'll stay here with South Webster. Yeah, and they get the ball to start the second quarter, so I would look for the Jeeps to try to run this down to get the last shot if possible. You don't want to get a shot with like six seconds left because then Miles Montgomery can qu quickly get down the court. Bernard set to inbound from the baseline. Into mold at the volleyball line. Now near side, Campbell. Looking down low, Roberts. Hook shot on the way. Too strong. Rebound, Kayser. Six to shoot for the Falcons. Montgomery pulls way downtown. Can't hit. 
Rebound, Summer throws it up with one hand the other way off the support. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. Eight minutes in, a 15 to 11 lead for the Falcons as we head to quarter number two. We'll be back in a moment right here on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Willie and Son Trucking. Willie and Son Trucking has been a proud supporter of local student athletes, coaches, and athletic programs throughout its history. Be sure to look out for the Shack Athlete of the Week presented by Willie and Son Trucking each week at SosaOhio.com. Kimberly. Tons of practice. One chop away from a black belt. Seven of the best sidekicks. And five years since her cancer diagnosis at Ohio Health. Fifteen to eleven, Falcon lead. Eight minutes into tonight's SOC three league matchup. Eight minutes to go before the break. Once again, four point lead for the Falcons. Yeah, neither team shot the ball well, but the Falcons were able to take advantage of the foul situation. For Southwestern was able to get to the line, and that was where the majority of their points came from. Miles Montgomery leading all scorers with eight. Eli Roberts with six for the Jeeps. First possession of the quarter belongs to the Jeeps. Feet on the baseline, Summer. Back to Campbell, pump fake, driving. Up with the right hand, blocked by Shoemaker who corrals the defensive rebound. Montgomery up the near side, lobbed to Kayser, just out of the reach of the 6'6 junior. On the break, Roberts, right hand, won't go. Rebound goes to Montgomery. Coast to coast, Montgomery, Ooh. left hand off the glass and in. I was getting ready to say something about the kind of careless turnover, and then he just goes in a flash and is now up to 10 points. Beautiful finish there by the junior. Back underneath to Summer is Jeff Pika. Called for the foul. His first tonight, two points alongside. Owen Moult set to inbound from the baseline. Running out of time, gets it into Summer, now near side, Campbell to Roberts on the right wing. Roberts for three, too strong, rebound Kayser. Fifth rebound already for Kayser. Montgomery feeding down low, Kayser. Reverse layup blocked by Roberts. Rhodes there for the offensive rebound. But he's got to go get that ball after he gets the block. Feet underneath, Shoemaker. Double teamed, his shot won't go. Offensive rebound off the miss. Second time up, draws the foul. Yeah, you got to keep playing. Get the block, Troy Rhodes goes and picks it up. And now Jackson Shoemaker's going to get a chance to go to the line. As I believe that's going to be the first foul on Tyler Summer. Shoemaker's first shots at the line tonight. First shot for Shoemaker is no good. Remains 17 to 11, 6.35 to go in the first half. Seven for 12 now for the Falcons at the line. Shoemaker over two, gets his own rebound, keeps the possession alive. Second chance now for the Falcons, up by six. You can't have you can't have players like that in a game like this for the Jeeps. You gotta gotta wake up. Top of the key, Shoemaker in and out. No, oh, drops it in for three. Gets the shooter's roll, 20 to 11, Minford. Going to get a timeout here for South Webster. Going to be a four. Full timeout for the Jeeps. We'll step aside. You're watching Ohio High School Boys Basketball on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. There's not a Parmar store near you now. There will be soon. That's the slogan, and that's what we believe at Parmar Stores. 
From groceries to gas and all the other stuff you need, Parmar has it. Download the Parmar app for even more savings. And don't forget the Parmar Rewards Card, too. We also believe in being a big part of your community, so look for us at the ball game or wherever you are. Shop us today, like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and remember, if there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. This presentation of High School Sports on Southern Ohio Sports Authority is brought to you in part by your local McDonald's. McDonald's proudly supports all area athletes again this season. Visit your local McDonald's in Chillicothe, Circleville, Greenfield, and Waverly, and be sure to check out Sosa's newly relaunched podcast, Overtime, presented by McDonald's. First time out tonight for either team, Jeeps with four remaining. 20-11 Jeeps basketball, 6.07 left in quarter number two. Yeah, South Webster has got to wake up, down nine already, and this is a Menford team that can really pour it on you if you're not coming with the same type of energy that they have. Timothy looking down low for Roberts. It's out of bounds on the Jeeps. Bennett Kayser forces the turnover. Great hustle by Kayser on that to get the steal. Not sure who it deflected off of, but will go with the Manford Falcons. Montgomery brings it across half for Minford. Give and go with Kayser. Right side, hands it off. Rhodes penetrates. Shoemaker pulls for three. Yes! Three threes already for Jackson Shoemaker. He likes when we're here. He shoots, shoots the lights out when we're here. 23 to 11, Jack Timothy. Spin move inside, cuts it back down to 10. I really like what I've seen out of Jack Timothy so far. This is the fourth time I've seen them do battles all night long. Entry pass, Kayser pulls up from 14, knocks it down. He started off 0 for 4 from the field, gets an easy shot there. Let's see if that gets Bennett Kayser going to start in this game. Mold on the left wing, finds Timothy top of the key, penetrates now Summer. Down low, Summer, left hand, tough shot, won't go. Offensive rebound, put back is good for Jack Timothy. Yeah, Timothy is keeping the Jeeps in this game single-handedly. Eight points right now for the senior. 25-15, Minford. Entry pass to Rhodes, back to Shoemaker, top of the key, tight close out by Summer. Great action. Pass down low, Kayser up and under, off the glass for two. Really good action to get Kayser open inside. Good patience to score it inside as well. Timothy drives, right hand, can't get it to go off the glass. Montgomery brings down the rebound. On the brink, fading away, Kayser, no good. Rebound, Timothy. I like trying to get the hot hand the ball there. Pushing it ahead, Summer pulls for three, in and out. Offensive rebound, Timothy pushed back into play. Shoemaker there for the steal. Montgomery in transition, pulls for three, can't get it to go. Rebound goes to Summer. Finds Campbell, mid-range jumper off the mark. Offensive rebound, Summer put back, fouled on the way up. He'll head to the line for two shots. Be his first chance at the line. Good hustle there by Tyler Summer, keep that play alive. I think for Minford, if you're not getting shots at the basket, you got to try to run some of these actions because they've done a really good job getting some good looks inside. That's the second one on Jackson Shoemaker, though. First shot for Summer is no good. Kate Glockner in for Jackson Shoemaker. Hunter Bernard back in for the Jeeps, as is Christian White. And for Owen Molt and Brock Campbell. Second shot for Summer is good. Lead down to 11 for the Falcons. First point, five rebounds for Tyler Summer. They got to get him going offensively as well, averaging almost 15 points a game. Montgomery driving baseline, kicks it out to Glockner. Now Kayser, left wing three, won't go. Ball tipped out of bounds by Jeff Pika. 
discussion between the officials to find out which way this ball will go. Minford basketball. No, it will be South Webster <laughs> basketball. Twenty seven sixteen Falcons three twenty five left in the first half. I'm just going to tell you, I'd probably point wrong all the time, too, because that was exactly where he wanted it to go. <laughs> Nice find underneath, Roberts off the glass, won't go, gets his own rebound, put back, is fouled. Two shots coming up for the 6'7 junior. And that's the type of energy they need to have out of Eli Roberts because he was fighting hard on that, and that's why he's going to get back to the line. Nice looking, find by Christian White as well. Looking to score his first points of the quarter. First foul on Troy Rhodes. Second shot for Roberts is no good. Offensive rebound for Summer. Roberts driving, stripped away, out of bounds on the Falcons. Jeeps will get another chance. That's two missed free throws that we've seen that there's just, it's not even been really close for the defensive team to get the, the rebound. Nice job by Tyler Summer to keep that play alive. Christian White inbounding from the baseline. Running out of time, gets it in to Tyler Summer behind half court. Top of the key, Summer back to White, looking underneath for Roberts as we have a foul on the floor. It'll be on Minford. It's gonna be on Pika. Foul on Pika, his second tonight. Fourth drawn now for Eli Roberts. Fourth foul this quarter on the Falcons. Next one into the bonus. Christian White once again inbounding. Into Bernard, jump stop, get Rhodes up in the air. Summer pulls for three, won't go. Offensive rebound for Bernard. Another shot for Summer behind the arc, this time knocks it down. He just needed to see one go in. Good job there by Hunter Bernard to keep that play alive and Christian White to find him to get Summer another look. 27-19, Minford, 2.24 left in the quarter. Kayser pulling up from about 16, draws the foul on Eli Roberts. Only two of four so far at the line for Kayser. Made his first, misses next two. Only six points so far, but he's had an excellent game overall, five rebounds already. First shot for Kayser, no good, remains an eight point lead for the Falcons. Second shot on the way, front iron won't go. Roberts fights for the rebound. And don't look now, the Jeeps are somehow in this game still. Underneath, Bernard fading away, draws the foul. Cade Glockner called for his first tonight. Yeah, despite having about a six-minute span where it felt like the Jeeps would rather have been anywhere else in the world besides here, they're only down eight, and they have a chance to get even closer here with the sophomore Bernard at the line. Two shots coming up for Bernard, unable to hit the first. Big thank you to all of our Winter Sports live stream sponsors, Glockner Family of Dealerships, Parmar Stores, Williamson Trucking, McDonald's, the Schmidt Family Restaurant Group, and Horizon. Bernard, one of two from the strike. The closest it's been since the first quarter. Top of the key, Kayser over to Rhodes, now Montgomery. Nice find underneath, Kayser off the glass, won't go. Roberts brings down the rebound. Christian White up the near side, now underneath, Summer. Double teamed, looking outside for Bernard. Bernard penetrates, now Summer from 15, yes. Good find. I'd get a timeout pretty soon here if I'm Coach Shoemaker, if you don't get a good look here. Good find by Hunter Bernard. Back-to-back -back makes by Tyler Summer. Cuts the lead down to five. Six points for the 6'3 senior.
Montgomery pulls way downtown, can't hit. Rebound for Jack Timothy. Timothy taking it all the way, draws the foul, he'll head to the line. Yeah, you get a bad shot, and now Timothy's gonna get two shots here at the line. Has not shot there yet, but he's 78% at the line on the season. Third now on Jeffrey Pico. Maybe I shouldn't throw out any of these free throw numbers because this has not been a pretty game so far at the strike. Oh, and Molt back in for the Jeeps. I believe it's Ethan Cordell be coming into the game now for the Falcons. A number switch was number 12 early in the season. Looks like he's to be number 23 now for the Falcons. Timothy splits the pair. Timeout, Minford. They're first tonight. Yeah, now 107 left. I mean, I don't think you're going to hold for a shot because I don't know if that's what they're going to do. Like, I just don't think that's what within them to hold for a shot for one. I would like to see, you know, I know he's not on the court with two fouls. Maybe try to get Jackson Shoemaker on because, I mean, he's knocked down a, a trio of triples for you so far. But Montgomery's got to try to get going to the basket. And he's just settling way too deep on some of these threes. And, it, and really, it, it's giving the Jeeps a chance to get out and run. Six boards now for Eli Roberts. He has not shot the ball well, but 6.6 .6 rebounds. Seems like he's woke up a little bit here in the second quarter, and it's down to only a four-point game. So let's see what Minford does. I mean, they've got a lot of good actions they can go to here. Let's see if they try to get Bennett Kaiser or something inside. 60 seconds to go in the first half. Falcons by four. Montgomery driving all the way through, back beyond the arc. Maybe they will hold for one. Either one or a really good one here. Montgomery backs it out beyond the volleyball line. Guarded by Summer off the Kayser screen. Now backs it back out. Eli Roberts now switched on to Montgomery. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Menford gets the ball to start the second half, so this could be a big momentum play for them to get a score here, especially starting the ball, starting off with the ball in the second half. I think you just still got to attack here. I don't want to see a deep three. Seven to shoot. Kayser pulls up from the free throw line, puts it in. Clock is down to two. Timothy heave at the buzzer. Woo, off the backboard, nearly drops it in. Big finish there. I like that play. Just getting Kayser a nice jumper from the foul line. Gives him a little bit momentum back after the Jeeps had ripped it almost all away going into the half. 16 minutes in, six point lead for the Falcons, 29-23 as we head to the break. We'll step aside, be back for the halftime show right here on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. Williams has transferred to Wendy's for the new loaded nacho cheeseburger. This burger is my inspiration, and I just hope to inspire you. Oh, you have inspired us. Thought we were doing names on the headband. Get it together. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new loaded nacho cheeseburger. Richer. Countless nights in the garage. Eight shiny new pistons. <laughs> One very happy 16-year-old granddaughter. And two years since starting cancer treatment at Ohio Health. Twenty-nine, twenty-three, Minford at the break. Nine minutes left here in halftime. John, I think it's safe to say this game has lived up to the hype thus far. Yeah, and it looked like it was not going to at all for a while, as it felt like it was very close. I think the lead got up to twelve. I think was the biggest that it was. 
for the Falcons. And it just felt like they were just an inch or two away from pulling away. And then really, I know we may not even have said his name that much. Hunter Bernard coming off the bench for the Jeeps gave great energy. And spent a couple quarters in the JV yeah. game prior. Yeah, only one point, one rebound, one assist in the half. But he just was kept making little plays, just good hustle plays. Jack Timothy was huge for them. And then really, Tyler Summer getting a couple shots to fall. He's got 6.6 .6 rebounds now. Uh, Timothy with 9.4 rebounds. Eli Roberts, 6.6 .6 rebounds. And then the only other, well, Dylan Schubert with a three. And then also one point for Hunter Bernard. But, you know, overall, for, for me, it was, it was, it felt like there were times when the Jeeps were not inter interested, but when they weren't interested was when Ninford started taking some wild shots. And then all you got to do is see one or two shots go in if you're the Jeeps. And I mean, they're nine and one for a reason. They've made really good halftime adjustments at all of their games so far this season, maybe withstanding the Wheelersburg game because you know I wasn't able to get a get eyes on that game but for the most part they've made some really good changes throughout the season let's see if they can do that here but I like what coach Shoemaker did to end the half there you've been taking some wild shots the momentum was with the Jeeps you run down you take the last shot and you take a really smart shot too because it's been at Kayser from 15 feet where he hasn't shot the ball super well tonight but you're also getting just an under control shot where if he misses it the best that South Webster's getting is a heave, which, you know, Timothy almost put his heave, heave in to end the half as well, though. Three game win streak for the Falcons over South Webster. Last win for the Jeeps was right here at the Nest back in 2021, December 17th, 56 42. Win for the Jeeps. South Webster winning their first nine contests of the season before falling in their first league matchup, as you mentioned to the 7-2 Wheelersburg Pirates, 71-61. Yeah, one of the big differences in that second quarter was throughout the first quarter, it felt like the uh, Falcons were able to get to the line kind of whenever they wanted, but they did not shoot. They only shot four free throws in the second quarter, and they missed all four free throws as well. So Jeff Pika with three fouls, that's something to really take a look at as well as you know, he provides them a lot of toughness and energy. You know, is he going to be able to bring that for this entire second half? And then Jackson Shoemaker with two fouls, so they were smart to not get him back in. Uh, nine, he has nine points, five rebounds, hit three three so far. Overall, I think it's just a it's a game that you know what we were kind of hoping for. I would like to see the energy overall pick up for both teams here in this second half. And I'm just interested to see the halftime adjustments as well. Now we're sitting here watching two regional hopefuls in both of their divisions, both powerhouses on yes. each side for South Webster. Especially in our coverage area, it's hard to think of any other Division IV teams. Obviously, Notre Dame is usually up and there. Fairfield. Fairfield as well. They're off to a hot start. I think they've won like 30, 30 league or 30, 30 regular season 34, games in a row. 34 regular season games in a row going back to, well, at least until last year. And I think they won a couple straight the year before going into the tournament. So it's, it's over 35. And they have a, a great point guard in Larkin Friend. They've got some nice pieces. I really like Logan McIntosh, which is a junior. For the most part, they're pretty senior heavy, but I, I like what the junior brings for them. I think they're an interesting team, but really, I think if this South Webster team plays at their peak, I don't know if there's a team in our coverage area that can beat them, but if they come out with that same energy they did early in this contest, you know, there's there's some teams in Division Four that can beat them. I mean, they lost in the district semifinal last year with much of the same team, not with Jack Timothy, but for the most part, the same team coming back. And let's see, you know, can they continue to mature as it seemed like they did through that first nine games? And let's see if they can mature big time here at the half. And it gets you excited for a lot of those games returning to the Convo this yes. season, the best place in our area to watch basketball. Yeah, it's the Convo's, you know, second to none in the state. 
amongst the places you watch high school basketball. It's, it's great to be able to get over to Dayton to watch the state games over there, but really, if you have a community involved, everybody in the Southeast District wants to get to the convo to play, and then anything on top of that is, you know, just kind of all gravy. Now, in the first half for Minford, you know, with a 29-23 lead, they were led by Miles Montgomery. He had 10 points, three rebounds, three assists. He was two of six from the field, making his first shot of each quarter, but was five of six from the free throw line. Uh, Jackson Shoemaker with nine points, sat a good bit of that second quarter, but he was three for five from three. Nine points, five rebounds for the junior. Bennett Kayser with eight points, hit that big jumper there late in the half to extend the lead back to six. He's also got five rebounds on the night. And then two points for Jeff Pika. He made that nice, tough, uh, fast break layup that was unable to con conclude the three-point play. But they also got some good minutes out of Kate Glockner and Troy Rhodes uh, did not score. And then also Ethan Cordell, who we had not seen yet this year. So it's good for Minford to be able to show, hey, we do have someone else that we can go to. Seventh guy. Yeah, a seventh guy. And I know Cordell, really good soccer player. So, you know, I assume a good athlete that they can put out there and at least fill some fill some time out there and, and more than likely make a couple plays if he needs to. Now, for the Jeeps, they were led by Jack Timothy with nine points. He was four or six from the field. And really, when it, it felt like Menford was starting to pull away when they got up 12, Timothy scored. Got back up 12, Timothy scored. And he was keeping them at least within a little bit of, at least a little bit of uh, range until Tyler Summer got going with his six points in the quarter. He ended up with 6.6 .6 rebounds. Also 6.6 .6 rebounds for Eli Roberts. Three points for Dylan Schubert. Hit a three in the first quarter, but he picked up a couple of fouls and then one point for Hunter Bernard, like we mentioned, he played some good minutes. Uh, also playing, not scoring with Owen Malt, Christian White, and Brock Campbell. So the fact that South Webster was able to go eight deep, I like that. We'll see how they adjust. They had, had some foul trouble with their guards with Schubert and White, but White was able to come in and contribute a little bit there in that second quarter as well. A little over a minute to go here at the break. We'll step aside second half coming up after this. You're watching Ohio High School Boys Basketball on Southern Ohio Sports Authority presented by Ohio Health. Everyone, Mike Glockner. I'm Brandon Callahan. Of the all-new Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Service Center in Portsmouth, Ohio. We have a $39.95 oil change special going on right now. That includes a free tire rotation and free multi-point inspection. Schedule your appointment online at glocknercdjrofportsmouth.com. Mark, six months of training. Eight miles to go. A three-way tie for almost last place. And three years since he and his team at Ohio Health left cancer in the dust. Second half, moments away. It will be Falcon basketball to start off quarter number three. Yeah, it's a big possession here if the Jeeps can put together a couple stops and try to get themselves back into this game a little bit more. They got down to four. Let's see if they can get even closer. They're cleaning up that, uh, I would say, the kids' corner over there in the in the far right as it seems like the Menford community has deposited their kids in that corner of the gym. Montgomery up court, Kayser. Driving, fading away from short range, can't connect. Jack Timothy, the rebound. Good, tough, tough look to start, but decent look for Kayser. First possession of the half for the Jeeps. Top of the key, White now left wing with Tyler Summer. Summer hands it off, Roberts top of the key, White far wing with Jack Timothy. Timothy driving, right-handed runner, bounces in and out. He'll stay there. Ball out of bounds on Jackson Shoemaker. Jeeps 
get another chance with a baseline out of bounds play. I almost think Shoemaker's giving him a little bit too much room because he can probably go into him and get some body contact to you know, strengthen back up before he goes up with those shots. Christian White inbounding for the Jeeps into Roberts, right back to White. Now Roberts on the right wing, top of the key, Summer. Roberts for sure. Roberts steps into a deep three, can't connect. Miles Montgomery the rebound. Falcons now the other way. Montgomery with the left hand draws the foul on Christian White. Yeah, I like the attempt there for Christian White to try to slide over and get there. I think he got there just a tad bit too late. Five for six at the line so far for Miles Montgomery, 10 points. Let's see if he can get going here at the line to start the second half. First shot for Montgomery, too strong off the back iron, remains a six point Falcon lead. Second shot on the way and in. Now 11 for the junior. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna get a lot of those times drying up the court in this second half. 11 points for Montgomery. See if something can pick up the energy in this gym because there is not much for as many people as there are in here. Roberts double teamed underneath, brings it back out beyond the arc. Now top of the key with Owen Malt. Near side wide, feeds it to Timothy. One on one with Shoemaker. One too many steps, turns it over. And that's where Shoemaker, he, he didn't pull the chair out from under him, but he, he kind of did as I think Timothy thought Shoemaker was going to be there with some contact when he wasn't, just takes one extra step. 30 to 23, Falcons. 6.20 to go in the third. Entry pass, Kayser. One on one with Summer, fading away, in and out. Rebound, Christian White. White, up the near side, Roberts driving, right hand, scoop layup, can't connect, rebound goes to Jeff Pika. Montgomery now up the near side. Crosses over, pulls up from 16, can't knock it down. Eli Roberts the rebound. It's a good look in transition. She's unable to get anything to fall. The other way, Summer can't connect. Offensive rebound for Timothy. Molt now driving, blocked by Rhodes. Rebound, Shoemaker. Montgomery on the break, reverses to the other side, off the glass and in for two. Timeout, Jeeps. Yeah, just not a lot of energy from either side, but the Jeeps are, or the Falcons ex able to extend it to a nine point game. You know, overall, you know, I would like to see a little bit more movement from both teams on the offensive end, or at least just a little more hard attacking because right now it's just a lot of just waiting on somebody to do something for both teams. 32-23, Menford, 5.30 left in the third. Another big thank you to Christian Ruby and the rest of the athletic department here in Menford for allowing us to come down and broadcast tonight's SOC3 league matchup. Yeah, it's great to be able to come be a part of this at, at a really fine school like this and we appreciate Miss Ruby for helping us out getting us set up here tonight. Although I'll be honest, I don't know if I would have said any school's bad. I'm just going to throw that out there. We probably wouldn't be welcome back if I did. Falcons by nine, five and a half to go in the third. Left corner, Schubert brings it out. White now, Summer, top of the key. Looking underneath for Roberts instead. Schubert, pump fakes, driving inside. Tough finish, drops it in. Nice job there by Schubert. Beautiful pump fake to get Pika in the air and then great finish around Bennett Kayser. Five points now for Dylan Schubert.
Montgomery, right corner, driving, baseline, passes it out, Pika left corner three, yes! And what that looked like was the Miles Montgomery to Adam Crank last year. If Pika could hit that consistently, this Menford team is scary. Falcons back up by 10. Halfway through the third. Summer driving, right hand, foul on Troy Road. Summer heads to the line, two shots. Yeah, Summer split a pair in the first half. And really, that's what really got him going because he, he had missed his first six shots before that. Free throws continue to be a problem for the Jeeps halfway through the third, trailing by 10. Second shot for Summer on the way and in. They were only five for 10 in the first half at the line, one for two to start the second half here, so right at 50. Entry pass right side to Glockner. Now Kayser down low, Shoemaker poked away by Summer. On the break, Schubert behind, blocked by Kayser. Offensive rebound, Owen Malt. Out to White, now Schubert left corner three, won't go. Offensive rebound, Roberts put back is no good. Jackson Shoemaker brings it down for the Falcons. Top of the key, Shoemaker down, Kayser fading away, can't connect. Rebound, inside. Christian White. White driving out, Summer right side three, puts it in. Good find there from Christian White. Gets Tyler Summer with his feet set, buries the triple, he's got 10. Back to a six point game. 35-29 Falcons. Pika driving right side, cut off by Schubert now. Shoemaker top of the key over to Glockner, around the world. Deep three from Montgomery is no good. Rebound, Eli Roberts. Back to Summer, same spot, same result for Tyler Summer. Buries another triple. Timeout, Menford. Jeeps cut it to three. Full timeout for the Falcons. We'll step aside. You're watching Ohio High School Boys Basketball on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Willie and Son Trucking. Willie and Son Trucking has been a proud supporter of local student athletes, coaches, and athletic programs throughout its history. Be sure to look out for the Shack Athlete of the Week presented by Willie and Son Trucking each week at SosaOhio.com. Kimberly. Tons of practice. One chop away from a black belt. Seven of the best sidekicks. And five years since her cancer diagnosis at Ohio Health. Thirty-five, thirty-two, Minford back to back. Tyler Summer threes cuts this Falcon lead down to three. Two forty-eight to go in the third. Summer, a forty-two percent three-point shooter this season, just getting really good looks and, and knocking them down. After a cold start, the senior stepping up in a big way for the Jeeps. Entry pass right side, Kayser going to work off the glass, can't get it to go. Schubert fighting for the rebound, pushed ahead, Malt. Underneath, gets Pika up in the air, off the glass. We have a one-point ball game. Yeah, right now, Medford can't get anything to fall. And the Jeeps are getting able, able to get out and run. Nice finish there by Malt. Kayser beyond the arc, hands it off to Montgomery, directing traffic. Medford will reset. I'd like to see if they can run something to get Jackson Shoemaker a shot at the top. Entry pass, Glockner, top of the key, three, Jackson Shoemaker knocks it down. Shoemaker. 38-34, Menford. 
Big Bernard shot. back in. Big shot for the junior there. His fourth made three of the game. Campbell pump fakes the three. Runner on the way. Can't get it to go. Rebound Montgomery. Falcons by four. 95 seconds left in the third. Top of the key, Kayser. Now Glockner, right corner, back out to Kayser. No, fakes it, now Montgomery beyond the volleyball line. Good job not forcing it in there, inside of the shoemaker. Left wing, Pika driving, spin move inside, cut off by Schubert who forces the travel. Eli Roberts back in for the Jeeps, comes in for Brock Campbell. Schuper giving good minutes, really good defense on that possession to stop Pika and just force him into the extra step. Tyler Summer and Miles Montgomery tied for the game high scoring lead of 13. Schuper brings it across half. Left corner, Malt now Bernard, top of the key, Tyler Summer. Under a minute to go in the quarter. Schubert penetrates, now out to Moult. <laughs> Left side, mid-range jumper for Schubert is no good. Offensive rebound and put back for Eli Roberts who draws the foul. Second tonight on Bennett Kayser. That was as clean of a block as you're going to see in that situation. Pandemonium underneath the basket after the missed Schubert jumper as Roberts knocks down the first. Nine seven. points. Oh. I'll check that. Should be seven. They only have him for five on the board, but it should be seven. Make it eight. Big possession here as South Webster will get the ball to start the fourth. Two point lead for the Falcons. They look to hold for last. 38 36. Montgomery guarded by Malt. Passes to Kayser, now Shoemaker. Back to Montgomery, five to shoot. Montgomery driving, pulls from 15, can't hit. Offensive rebound, Kayser, put back as good as time expires. Big time play there by Bennett Kayser. His first points of the half gets him to 10. And really his first rebound of the half as well. So big time play there for Bennett Kayser in the quarter. Bull head to the final quarter of play, 40 to 36. Minford will be back in a moment. You're watching Ohio High School boys basketball on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. There's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. That's the slogan, and that's what we believe at Parmar stores. From groceries to gas and all the other stuff you need, Parmar has it. Download the Parmar app for even more savings, and don't forget the Parmar rewards card too. We also believe in being a big part of your community, so look for us at the ball game or wherever you are. Shop us today, like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and remember, if there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. This presentation of High School Sports on Southern Ohio Sports Authority is brought to you in part by your local McDonald's. McDonald's proudly supports all area athletes again this season. Visit your local McDonald's in Chillicothe, Circleville, Greenfield, and Waverly, and be sure to check out Sosa's newly relaunched podcast, Overtime, presented by McDonald's. Eight minutes to go in regulation, Minford by four. Yeah, it felt like it was going to be a lot of momentum for the Jeeps, but nice job there by Bennett Kayser to rip it back away. Should have a really fun here last fourth quarter here. Last fourth quarter, or the only fourth quarter as well. I was wrong, it's Eli Roberts does only have six points, so it is correct on the scoreboard. Did some mathing. First possession of the quarter belongs to the Jeeps. White driving inside, jump ball underneath the basket. Falcon basketball. Yeah, good job there by Troy Rhodes. And, and really with Christian White, he, he's 
he's only shot 25 times on the season. So he's probably not driving that in to score. So you just got to be smarter in, on that play to start the quarter. Montgomery across half. Entry pass left side to Glockner. Right wing, Shoemaker driving, steps back, feeds it out. Kayser. Now Glockner over to Montgomery. Top of the key, Kayser drives Woo. inside. Crossover blocked by Roberts. Comes down with the rebound as well. Jeeps with numbers. Schubert driving. Summer for the lead. No, it would have been to cut it to one. Nonetheless, shot is off. Montgomery with the rebound. The other way, reverses with the right hand and in. Miles Montgomery is unreal in transition, and he takes advantage of that numbers advantage right there. Takes it to a six-point lead. 15 points now for Montgomery. 42-36, Falcons. Summer driving inside, up strong with the right hand, can't connect. Strong defense and another rebound for Jackson Shoemaker. Eight boards now to go with his 12 points for Jackson Shoemaker. Shoemaker pump fakes on the three, out to Kayser, now Montgomery. Driving, feeds it out, Rhodes, Shoemaker, right wing three on the way, won't go. Offensive rebound, Kayser. Put back is good. Nice touch there by Bennett Kayser. We're going to get a timeout. Going to be a full up to an eight-point lead with 6.15 to play. 44-36, Menford, full timeout for the Jeeps. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Ohio High School Boys Basketball on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. Williams has transferred to Wendy's for the new loaded nacho cheeseburger. This burger is my inspiration, and I just hope to inspire you. Oh, you have inspired us. I thought we were doing names on the headband. Get it together. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new loaded nacho cheeseburger. Richer. Countless nights in the garage. Eight shiny new pistons. One very happy 16-year-old granddaughter. And two years since starting cancer treatment at Ohio Health. Six, Menford, 6.15 to go in regulation. Three timeouts left for Coach Shoemaker. Four remaining for Ryan Fenton and the South Webster Jeeps. Yeah, let's see what the Jeeps can do. They've done a nice job of adjusting out of their timeouts so far. Let's see if they can do it again here. I would like to see Jack Timothy back in this game at some point for the Jeeps as it's been a while since he's been in. Summer hands it off to Roberts. Roberts driving, fading away. Shot deflected by Kayser. Pika the other way, saves it back into play. Dylan Schubert there for the takeaway. On the break, Schubert underneath, hands it off. Bernard out to Summer. Driving, Molt, right corner three, won't go. Kayser the defensive rebound. Montgomery brings it up the near side. Driving, cut off. Pika, right side three. Yes! Two for two from three for Jeffrey Pika. Huge shots for the senior. He's got eight. Second biggest lead of the game as well. Jack Timothy heads to the scores table. Owen Malt now to Hunter Bernard in the left corner. Bernard driving, nice finish, and the foul. Hunter Bernard's given great minutes so far to Coach Fenton off the bench. Does a nice job driving through, finishing through contact. Once again, giving the Jeeps a little bit of life after he did it a lot there in that second quarter. Bernard able to convert the three-point play. John, I believe five points now for Bernard. Uh, only four, but only four. You, yeah, but it's 
every one of them has been big, so I'd like to see him get another shot here in this last five minutes. Falcon basketball up by eight. Right side, Glockner finds Kayser down low. Shoemaker up strong with the right hand, drops it in for two. Lead is back up to 10 for Menford. Good high-low action there. I believe that's Jackson Shoemaker's only his second two-point attempt of the game. Timothy back in for the Jeeps. Near side, Summer, now a Schubert at the top of the key, feeds it. Roberts driving, scoop layup is in. His first basket since his first shot of the game. That's better, Miles. <laughs> he looked like he wanted to pull that from real deep once again. Eight points now for Roberts. But now he's going to have a wide open look. Top of the key, Montgomery can't connect. Dylan Schubert pulls down the defensive board. Very fortunate for the Jeeps there. Underneath, Schubert, tough finish and the foul. Another and one for the Jeeps. First foul tonight on Miles Montgomery. Schubert's basket cuts it down to six. Nice job by Schubert. Coming off the bench tonight, he's got six. Averages seven on the year. Nice job there for the junior. Troy Rhodes back in for the Falcons. And for Cade Glockner. Free throw is no good for Dylan Schubert. Rebound, Kayser. Nine boards now for Kayser on the night. Off the screen, Rhodes driving, scoreless thus far, not anymore. His first shot since the first quarter. Nice job by Rhodes. You have to take advantage, you have to look at him now. 51-43 Falcons. Halfway through the fourth. Near side, Campbell. Page to the far side, now now Owen Molt. Driving, hands it off to Timothy. Back to Schubert, strong defense from the Falcons. Somebody's gotta look to score for the Jeeps. Timothy, down low, right hand, shot won't go, rebound Montgomery. Eight boards now for the point guard. Falcons get the stop with under three minutes to go. Entry pass to Pika, nearly taken away by Schubert. Back to Montgomery, now Pika left side. Shoemaker lobs to Kayser off the glass for two. Falcons by 10. The high-low game when it gets going for Minford is deadly. Another nice pass inside for good basket there for Kayser. Schubert penetrates out to Timothy, who's left wide open in the right corner. Top of the key, Molt thought about the three, now Schubert. Left corner back to Timothy over to Molt. Two minutes to go in the fourth. Timeout, Webster. Gonna be a 30. Just gotta, gotta be looking, you're down 10. You gotta try to score at some point. These have been very long possessions without really looking at the baskets. Basket now for the Jeeps on repeated possessions in a row. Let's see if they can do something. Like they should have it underneath here. Although the timeout may have been called when they're going to be at the midcourt line. So interesting to see what they try to do on this out-of-bounds play. Coming and up a little bit. Let me go ahead. Yeah, Roberts hasn't done a whole lot tonight, but I think you've got to look for him because at least he's a threat offensively. Summer hasn't – he's only taken the two shots this quarter, but really – the Jeeps haven't really looked at the basket much in this quarter. Once they got it down to two, it's been pretty much all Falcons since then. Jeeps basketball trailing by 10. Two minutes left in regulation. 
Bernard swings to Roberts, way downtown, fouled on the way up. Three shots coming up for Eli Roberts. Yeah, and then there you just run an action. Now you're going to get three shots at the line for Roberts, who is four for six at the line on the, on the night. But at least you're going to get a chance here. Good job out of the timeout there for the Jeeps. First shot for Roberts falls in. Nine now. And one thing for the Jeeps also, they have no fouls in this quarter, so they can be really aggressive defensively because you've got fouls to give. 3 for 3 from the stripe for Eli Roberts. Cuts the Falcon lead down to 7. Montgomery up the near side looking for Shoemaker underneath and out of bounds as of now South Webster basketball. And and there you just put a little pressure on. And now you get the ball back down 7. See if you can chip away. Montgomery begging for a deflection, will not get it. Schuper driving, tough shot, no good. Rebound, Pika. Pika taking it up the far sideline. Timeout, Minford. Going to be a 30-second timeout, and I think for Coach Shoemaker here, you just want to say, guys, just be strong with the ball because they're going to be aggressive. Take care of it. If you get a layup, you get a layup. If not, let's run a little bit of clock. We don't have to take a quick shot. We don't even have to take a shot. And especially with they got four fouls until you're even in the bonus. Each team has two timeouts left. Also, the reset, the possession arrow is going with the Jeep. So really, if you're Coach Fenton here, also you're saying, you got to remind them, hey, get a jump ball, get a jump ball. That's fine because then it's our possession, but go for the ball. We got fouls to give. Nobody's in foul trouble at all. Christian White has three, but not in the game as well at this point. Montgomery with a game high of 15. Team high for South Webster, 13 for Tyler Summer. Inbound to Montgomery. Across half and into the half court for the Falcons. Although they're trying to give the foul. <laughs> and it's a lot easier said than done to try to not let Miles Montgomery get the ball because once he does, he's so fast with it that he's going to be able to run off a little bit of time before you're even able to foul him. Near side, Montgomery double teamed, looking down low for Kayser. Thrown nice back play. into play by Roberts, keeps it alive. Really nice play there by Eli Roberts. South Webster steals a possession. Bernard driving, blocked by Pika, out of bounds. Nice job by Pika, and I like that from Bernard. Not able to get the points, but at least going to the basket, possibly get to the free throw line. Unable to do so on that play, though. Roberts inbounding into Summer. Now Molt back to Summer left wing. Summer driving, reverses side, blocked by Kayser. Pika up the near side and across half court. Yep. Carry on Pika, hands it right back to South Webster. It looked very awkward from up here, so not surprised that was called a carry. Deep three by Eli Roberts is good. Only a four point game. So now, since the Jeep started putting on pressure, the Falcons haven't scored and have three turnovers, so. Roberts now leading the Jeeps with 14. Troy Rhodes near side, Hunter Bernard fouls. Only the third this quarter for South Webster. Still one to go.
Pika inbounding in front of the South Webster bench. Into Shoemaker, hands it off Montgomery. Foul on Owen Moult. This is fourth. I mean, out of the guys that are probably going to catch it, I think you probably want Kayser to catch it here if you're the Jeeps. He's only two of six from the line so far tonight. I, you got a foul immediately. Pika inbounds Kayser, now Montgomery, who will head to the line for two shots. Falcons by four, 26 ticks left in regulation. Christian White back in for South Webster. Montgomery six of eight so far at the line tonight. First shot for Montgomery is no good. 15 on the night for the point guard. A little bit of light now for the Jeeps. Second shot on the way and in. Up the near side, Schubert. Now Christian White finds Summer, falling into a three, buries it. Lead is down to two for the Falcons. Timeout, South Webster. And got to make your free throws. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You're going to get possession. And I think really here, if you're South Webster, you got to point out, like, we have the arrow. If you can get, if you can get a jump ball, because right now, Menford's expecting to get fouled. So they're going to wait for the foul. So try to get a jump ball. Maybe you can steal possession. If not, you're going to get the foul anyway. And right now, Menford has not shot well at the free throw line tonight. So no matter who you are, who you're fouling, even though Miles Montgomery is seven for 10. And he's seven for 10, Kayser's two of six, Jackson Shoemaker's 0 of two, Jeffrey Pika's 0 for one, Troy Rhodes has not shot a free throw. I would think Pika's gonna be your inbounder here. Just a little glimmer of life here for South Webster. And they still have a timeout left as well. Pika inbounding. Not the worst thing there for South Webster. Foul on the floor, Dylan Schuper picks up his third. And it's probably not who you want at the line, but you foul with no time off the clock, and it's not an intentional foul because you're just trying to deny him the ball there. Montgomery to the line, split a pair his last trip. First shot is good. And even if he makes this here, you can still go to the basket if you're South Webster because you have a timeout, but you also, you got a chance, you got Roberts, and Summer, who can both knock down the three ball. Second shot from Montgomery is good. Webster pushes it ahead. Pass to Schubert is off the hands of the junior and out of bounds. Falcons take over by four. Pika inbounding Montgomery, playing keep away up the near side, Kayser. Now back to Montgomery, driving baseline, draws the foul on Dylan Schubert, his fourth. Two shots for the reigning SOC2 player of the year. First one is good. Yeah, and I think Coach Shoemaker will let you know his team did not play very well, and they're going to escape with a big-time win here in SOC 3 play. 20 points now on the night for Miles Montgomery. Summer steps into a deep three, puts it in at the horn. That cuts it to three, but that'll do it. Falcons hold on 58-55. Their ninth win of the season.
wasn't, wasn't pretty, but I think you will take that any day of the week if your coach Shoemaker. Great performance by Tyler Summer. Just was not enough there at the very end for the Jeeves. I mean, sign me up for the next one. 58 to 55 is our final. We'll step aside and come back for the postgame show right here on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. Hey everyone, Mike Glockner. I'm Brandon Callahan. Of the all-new Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Service Center in Portsmouth, Ohio. We have a $39.95 oil change special going on right now. That includes a free tire rotation and free multi-point inspection. Schedule your appointment online at Glockner CDJR of Portsmouth. Mark, six months of training, eight miles to go, a three-way tie for almost last place, and three years since he and his team at Ohio Health left cancer in the dust. Fifty-eight to fifty-five is our final. The Falcons remain unbeaten in SOC three league play for the Jeeps. They dropped their second consecutive game as well as their second consecutive league game. Now falling to Wheelersburg and to Minford. Yeah, and those are two really good teams that they dropped to. But this is a game if you're going to go back and watch for Southwestern, you're going to. You're going to really kick yourself because of how they played in that second quarter and then really a lot of the fourth quarter as well. But at the same time, you're going to be proud of the fight that the Jeeps gave tonight as you know they gave themselves a chance here late in the game. Tyler Summers knocks down a couple of big-time threes, and really Eli Roberts came alive in that fourth quarter and finished with a nice score line, although you may not have thought so if you just watched how the first three quarters of the game went. But overall, a good win for the Falcons. When you have two teams that are ranked in the state polls, you're expecting a knockdown drag out fight, and that's what we got for the most part tonight. And I think when these two teams match up again over at South Webster should be a dynamite contest between the two teams then. And really, at that point, the Jeeps are gonna be playing for their SOC three lives. I don't think they're done because I'm not sure like, this league is so good from top to bottom that you're going to have to bring it every night, and I wouldn't be surprised if the league champion had multiple league losses. That makes you look forward to Minford and Wheelersburg yes. as you have a Wheelersburg team that took down this Jeep team that just took Minford to the brink, technically losing by three, but more or less a six-point yeah. basketball game. I'm excited. I think the SOC3 is an absolute race this year, yeah. and as you said... Wouldn't be surprised if the league winner has multiple losses. Well, well, you look over at the FAC. You have a Jackson team that is eight and four coming into tonight. West beat them. And West right now is probably at the bottom of the SOC three standings. But that's a team that has some good athletes. They're well coached. They're a team that can beat you anytime. Valley may have the best player in the league in Jace Copley, a guy who can get 30, possibly 40 in a night. Waverly, well coached, seems like they're coming along. They're very young, but those are good teams. And then you have the top three with South Webster, Wheelersburg, and Minford, and obviously Webster 0 for 2 in those first two outings. But man, they, they showed some fight tonight, and I think they have a lot to, you know, play for moving forward. Minford at Wheelersburg, January 19th. So just. 10 days away from now mm. be in Wheelersburg for that one. On tap the rest of the week for both of these teams will remain in the SOC3. For Menford, they'll travel to Portsmouth West on Friday. South Webster will be on the road as well as they take on Waverly who trailed Wheelersburg by eight at the mm. half. No further updates from that game yet. Yeah, and then the scoring tonight for Menford, they were led by Miles Montgomery. He had 20 points. He also had eight rebounds and five assists for the junior who I, I think when he looks back at this will, will say he didn't play all that well but made some big free throws down the stretch and had a couple of plays where he just shot out of a rocket in transition. So he led them with 20 points a game high. Uh, 
Bennett Kayser, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Also had three blocks, 14 points for Jackson Shoemaker with eight rebounds, had three assists, eight big points from Jeffrey Pika, hit a three in each of the third and fourth quarters. It was three for three from the field on the night. Troy Rhodes with two big points in that fourth quarter when it felt like they were about to run away with the game. Kate Glockner did not score, neither did Ethan Cordell, but gave them good minutes off the bench. For South Webster, they were led by Tyler Summers. He had 19 points, including five triples. Was huge in keeping them in this game. Hit four out of his five three-pointers in the second half alone. Next, Eli Roberts, 14 points, 11 rebounds, two blocks on the night. Had a nice second half after a slow start. Jack Timothy had nine points all in the first half. Didn't play very much in the second half. Six rebounds as well. And also six points for Dylan Schubert, four points for Hunter Bernard with some big minutes off the bench for them. Owen Malt with two, Christian White and Brock Campbell did not score but played some big minutes for the Chiefs as well. Great game tonight. Coming up later on this week on Friday, we'll be back down in P-Town as they host the South Point Pointers. John, on overtime, presented by McDonald's. Yes. We've talked about it a ton in our area, man. D3 is loaded. loaded. You talk about pretty much all of the OVC teams. You throw in Menford, Wheelersburg, obviously South Webster in Division Four, But you have Ironton, Portsmouth, South Point, Fairland. Even Chesapeake has, has shown you know, they're yes. probably going to be. We talked, personally, we've talked, they'll probably be maybe an eight or nine seed, but that's an eight or nine seed. Did, you don't want to play in the district semis. Did you miss, mention an Adina team that's been rolled? Like, Adina just rolled over a good Hillsborough team. North Adams as North well. North Adams, yeah. It's. Uh, did you mention Eastern Brown? I did not. The, that's Eastern, a sneaky. And I, I, I would 30. say they're probably, given the landscape, may draw a double-digit seed. Yeah. It would be close. Them and Chesapeake, I think, are the two sleeper teams that wouldn't surprise me if they knock off one of these top dogs. Uh, yeah, you, you got to bring tournament. it every single night in tournament play. And, and really, if you watch this game as a D4 team, you can't be real excited to see South Webster <laughs> in there uh, on the other side as well. So should be outstanding as, you know, we still got a whole month to play before we even get to the tournament drawings, but should be a... Uh, a fun time to follow along here with us on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. Make sure to check out this week's episode of Overtime. Overtime dropped yes. today at 8 a.m. Talked, previewed this game as well as some of the other games coming up later this mm -hmm. week. Next episode will be out next Tuesday. We'll definitely be talking about this game in that yes, one. Is, for this sure. one was one to remember. 58 to 55 is our final big thank you to Kenneth Hay, as always, for tagging along. Brian Wickline driving uh, us driver. down tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Dewey Daly and John Bruce signing off on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health.